Before we start the show, um, I just want to say this is difficult for the four women that are sat here. And if we look at the stats, we've got one in four women and around one in seven men in England and Wales will experience some form of domestic abuse in their lifetime. With numbers like that, it isn't surprising that several of the women who sit behind this desk every day are also survivors of abuse. And it is difficult. It's not easy for them to share their stories this afternoon. Um, and I'm very proud of them for sharing their stories this afternoon. And it's going to be difficult in parts, but as this campaign says, we are facing it together. So we're telling these stories because we do feel it is hugely important. So whether you are a survivor or, like me, a friend, here is why we here at Loose Women are facing it together. I wanted to be part of the Loose Women Face It Together campaign because I want people to know the Olivia you see on the panel, the confident version of myself. I wasn't always like this. I wish I had someone to face it together with when I was facing domestic abuse. I think it's so important for us to be able to use our space to raise awareness. I really hope that this makes somebody feel that they can pick up the phone and tell a friend or reach out or be honest. Probably all of us have examples where we know that our friends have been in situations that are unhealthy for them and perhaps unhealthy for their children. Hopefully through this, people can understand the best way to approach it and the best way to offer support. Many, many, many years ago, I was in what I would call an emotionally abusive relationship. Never physical, but they are bruises that you just can't see. It makes me shudder now to think that I put up with that for so long and getting out of it was the best thing that I ever did. It would probably surprise a lot of people as I've never spoken about it publicly, but in some of my past relationships, I have suffered domestic abuse. And I think by being transparent, it might help someone else in a similar situation. When I look back over past relationships, there has been issues that have shown themselves in different forms, from coercive control to intimidation. For a lot of people, it would be hard to imagine me editing myself because I felt like I was annoying or I was too much. I very quickly became conditioned that the things I was experiencing were normal, or if not normal, they were my fault. I definitely came across this a lot um, in previous work and with people that I know on a personal level. There's always that moment where you think to yourself, like, what can I do? So it's always something that I thought I would love to campaign behind. One of the main things that people who abuse will do is make people feel like they are the only one, and that's the easiest way to silence you. These people chip away at your personality. People have said to me, I can't imagine you put up with that. But my personality was diminished. There is something in many of us who thinks that we can change people. Unfortunately, these leopards very rarely change their spots. They'll always find a way for you to doubt yourself. And they become like almost artistic at like placing those seeds of self-doubt. And you start to believe it. You hear something enough, it becomes truth. I think being a mum of boys makes the campaign important. It happens to men as well. I think we forget about that. But also to teach my boys the signs for them to make sure they're not falling into bad habits with partners as well. We're seen as these women that are on television doing amazing things, but equally, it can happen to people like us. Sometimes all somebody wants is just to be listened to. Your girl gang can be the most important support that you could ever ask for. I hope from doing this campaign that we make people feel stronger and I think to be able to help people to help that person. Something I read almost daily in my DMs from young women is how did you become so confident? What I want to convey is that that didn't happen overnight. I think focusing a campaign on domestic abuse is so necessary and essential and we should keep reminding people that this doesn't just go away after we talk about it once. It's, it's forever present and if we don't keep people facing up to it, then people will forget. Oh, um, 
Um, really proud of the four of you for getting involved in this, because I know it's not, it's not easy at all to go over something that you've been through in the past that's had such an impact on your lives. Um, but that's part of the reason why I wanted to get involved in it, because I think when you are going through it, it's difficult, but when you're a friend of somebody going through it, it can be really hard to know the right thing to do, and that is the point of what we are doing here today. But, Kelly, what was that shoot like for you to be involved in it? It's funny is that you come to work and you, you do the things you do, and I do really need to applaud our production team, um, in particular, Yuljan, who's been really at the forefront of this, you know, making sure that we've been cared for, supported, but also making sure that this message is really clear. Um, uh, but, yeah, you go to work and you think you're just going to do, you know, your usual day's work, and... Yeah, it was just, uh, it, it was, uh, the, the poignancy of it for me was like, you know, we were talking about this shoot and I chose, it was literally just came organically as I was preparing for, for the picture. And uh, the minute I took my wrist, it just reminded me of what used to happen to me physically. So what lots of abusers, um, you know, some are more astute than others. And in my case, um, my wrists were something that he would use on a regular basis to restrain me in different ways. And that is a way of them feeling, ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's a way of them feeling... <laughs> that's a way of them feeling, um... Oh, God. That's a way of them feeling that they have control over you. Yeah. But equally, it's a way that they can say they didn't hit you either. Because mm. in those days, the language around domestic abuse was very much that, um, you know, oh, has he? That's the question that people in authority would ask you. You know, have, did, did, he, did he hit you? And if you could say, if, you, if I could say, I, all I could say was no, I haven't mm. actually, hasn't mm. actually physically hit me. So therefore, that must be okay. Yeah. And so lots of people, you know, find. So that was that was my reason anyway. And and that's um, it's an important point there to sort of talk about the the older way that we used to look at yeah. domestic abuse. And um, a lot of people may wonder why we chose to not paint bruises um, on our bodies in order to be able to um, depict um, abuse in this campaign. But actually, we spoke to a lot of charities for this campaign, including Women's Aid and um, and Safe Lives, and they said not to do bruises or to do black eyes because it can trigger painful memories for men and women, um, but especially the women that are involved in this shoot. And sometimes those who perpetrate the abuse they can sometimes see the results as a badge of honour. And we didn't want to, to do that either. And it's also, as all these women will tell you, tell you during the course of this programme, it is such a common misconception that, that only physical evidence is proof that you are within a domestic abuse scenario. And that is simply not true. And that's why we chose not to do that. Um, and I know that... Um, Janet and um, uh, Janet and you were not involved, um, safe um, in the in the pictures, but you all did want to be a part of this campaign. Very quickly, why, Janet? Well, because it happened to me, and when I talked about it on the show a few years ago, people were astounded. They just couldn't believe it, and in a way, I couldn't believe it happened. It was a period of my life where. Even now, I can't believe it happened. Yeah. And I have to stop myself blaming myself about it. And it did have a big impact on me on the at the mm. time. And it was very, very difficult to extricate yeah. myself from. And I wanted to come on the show to say to other women my age, um, it happens to people, older women. It's not all younger, attractive women. You know, it's not something that happens you know, early in relationships. A lot of women in Britain have put up with it for decades, yeah. Yeah. decades. And unfortunately, when you... See, it's not... So, older women and middle-aged women uh, suffering domestic abuse isn't something that really gets shown a lot mm. on television. It's not shown in drama. There are a lot of stereotypical images of it. 
in drama. So you might see in period drama in the 40s and 50s and early 60s. And they sort of look at things in, you know, uh, in a very specific way. And that's why we're sort of looking at it in a, in a different way. And so if you... That was part of the reason why you wanted to be involved in this campaign. Sim similar to Janet, I, I felt I, I, I ought to be here for a couple of reasons. One is I have my own experiences, but the other is I kind of want to represent a group of women that often get overlooked in this conversation, which is disabled women. Um, and I made a documentary about this last year. I feel very strongly about talking about the ways in which abuse can manifest yeah. with different types of women. So that's why I'm, I'm here today. I'm with you, to appreciate it. Um, uh, just so everyone knows where the campaign is concerned, because I know there's been a lot of chatter on, on social media about it, what we've done with this campaign is we have women who are survivors of domestic abuse and we are representing friends who also want to help their loved ones who perhaps are going through something very similar, which is why the campaign is called Facing It together because hopefully that's when individuals men and women could hopefully see change in their lives um, you'll have noticed that we're also flashing up the number for the national domestic abuse helpline and we will do that throughout today's show it is free it's confidential and available 24 hours a day um, but before we go to the break we also want to say a huge thank you to our photographer yolanda wiley who you may have spotted in um the, the film that we showed earlier she shot last year's body stories and is a huge advocate for women women's rights and empowerment and she really really wanted to get involved in this campaign because of its importance well after the break the women will be sharing their own empowering stories of survival so we'll see you after the break